Well, the year of 2020 has been interesting, so it can go fuck itself. Uh, but there have been games that have come out in this very year that has kept us going. With some of the games being so soothing to play and some of the games that people have just hated on. I'm talking about Last of Us Part 2, of course. Regardless of that, we had so many cool games that everybody can play. I decided to make a small list of my favorite games of 2020 or you can say the best games of 2020 according to me. Now remember, remember this very very carefully. This is my list. So my list will be different from your list. So if you have any other game that you think are the best for yourself in this very year, let me know in the comments below because what I list you might not like. So please, I would like to repeat again, this is my list. Not your list. Understand? Okay, let's go on with it. The first one that will come onto my list is Doom Eternal. Of course, when you hear Doom, it's all about shooting monsters, demons, and more monsters, and that is exactly what Doom Eternal is. This is a sequel to Doom 2016, which plays as good as Doom. The game has been made a bit hard, but there is scarcity of ammo, so you need to collect ammo by grinding enemies through the chainsaw and try to save up as much as possible, and of course, dodge a lot. It's very cool that they made this game a little bit harder in terms of weapons, of course in terms of variety of bosses that you get to play because it dots so much, you have like very few seconds of opening where you can shoot a someone or a demon, whatever it is, to get the shot and to get some kind of stun damage or whatever kind of damage and it's very cool that they made that game so hard like that. Along with that, the game also had puzzles that you need to go across, climb, crawl and do all of that stuff to reach that level and to unlock that puzzle. It's pretty cool that they have added more puzzle sets into this game as well. And Doom is full of moments where you are in a big space and the moment you land in, you know a big fight is gonna take place and the moment the big fight starts, an amazing music hits up and just powers you through to go just jump across dodge and just kill all these people. It's pretty awesome. This game is already available in Xbox Game Pass for you guys to play so if you haven't already, do give this game a try. Next one will be Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I was waiting for this game since last year, ever since it was announced that Ori and the next game of Ori is going to come out. And I was like, yes! <laughs> I'm one of those big fanboys of Ori games. Ori in the Blind Forest was one of my favorite games that I ever played. Along with that, that was my first platformer game. And I really loved how Ori was. The music, the aesthetic, the feel, the fights, everything was perfect. And Ori in the Will of the Wisp just, you know, doubles that up with bigger monsters, bigger fights, much better movement, much better visuals, a beautiful, of course, soundtrack, and so much better than Ori in the Blind Forest. Of course, with better comes harder difficulty. The game is more harder than Ori and the Blind Forest will ever be, and it's sometimes it's very hard to, you know, go through one particular uh, segment because it's so hard to just get away with it. And sometimes you might get frustrated because I did get frustrated at a few points, but after that, when you complete that segment, the feeling of relaxation and the feeling of moving forward keeps on continuing. The game takes you on a new location where the tree is dead and all the light is gone and Ori is the only way to bring that light back with the big bird Shriek who has forgotten about love and has gone into the paths of darkness. The story right here is so deep and by the end of this, you will feel bad for not only the protagonist but also the antagonist. That is what, uh, you know, made me feel super sad about it because by the end of the game, I felt sad about what antagonist. There's a scene, a particular scene that made me feel like, oh my god, I know why uh, Shriek had to go through that. Overall, this game is fabulous and I hate to see that not a lot of people actually know about this game. But I would like you guys to try this game out. It is beautiful. It is available in Xbox Game Pass right now. So please do give it a try. You will not. You will not regret this. Number 3 will be Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. I know that this Spider-Man game is technically not a standalone game, it is sort of is a DLC that has been turned into a standalone game, but still, regardless, this is one of my favorite games because I love Spider-Man, I'm a big fan of Spider-Man and of course, I will always support Spider-Man, so for me, this game was better. You play as Miles Morales after the events of the first game, but you're challenged by this new group of enemies, but this time, these enemies actually don't want to take over the world. Usually that's how it is, but this time they actually want to defeat someone who wants to take over the world. The best thing about this game is how Peter Parker and Miles Morales are two different people, two different types of people, and they work differently. Miles Morales is so much different than Peter, and Miles Morales as Spider-Man is also so much different than Peter because Miles has these powers, these electric kind of powers. 
He also has more power such as invisibility, so much more. Along with that, the game added these amazing animations, especially from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, low FPS kind of animation that you can actually have in your suit, which is absolutely brilliant. They also added the suit of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, really cool. And the music of this game, you know, the hip-hop tracks that they've added, the trap music that they've added, it's pretty cool to swing by and listen to those music. Also, I found out a few weeks ago that the voice actor of Miles is actually the same voice actor who voice acted Sam in The Last of Us, so that's brilliant. The game is really cool, I really loved it. The only sad part is how this game is a little bit priced for a game which is act as a DLC instead of a standalone Spider-Man game because I believe the standalone Spider-Man game would be Marvel's Spider-Man 2. But regardless, this game is still fun, so I would say wait for the sales so that the price can drop and then you can play it. In number 2 will come Ghost of Tsushima. This is one of the most beautiful looking games of 2020 periods. I'm saying period because I won't say that Last of Us Part 2's visual was better than this. I would say this game, Ghost of Tsushima's visuals, were better than Last of Us Part 2. You can literally take millions and millions of screenshots by just literally walking from one section of the game to the other. Literally. I don't think so anybody would have gone through the first few hours of the game not taking millions of screenshots. The world around you is absolutely mind-blowing. The wind is blowing all the time. The landscapes are so beautiful. Everything makes this game so much more beautiful. But the game also plays very well. You are a samurai who is focused on defending the Tsushima island from the Mongols. You are challenged by yourself in many ways on what a samurai should or should not do. The combat of this game is extraordinary, very satisfying in a way as well. You can go stealthy or full blown attack. There are different stances that you can use for different type of enemies so that you can defeat them. Those type of things that they have added in the game is really really cool to have. The story is interesting and really well done and not only that, the overall gameplay is absolutely phenomenal. The game does not even show you a map in some corner. If you want to go to some location, you actually have to use the winds to uh, you know, take you to that location which is pretty cool thing to do. And there's so many side quests that you just cannot stop doing. The best thing about this is how I have not played this game at all. I don't own this game, I have not played it at all. But I have seen, I have watched gameplays, I have watched streams and I know that from that only I know how this game is so beautiful and I know how this game is so much satisfying, so much cool and a lot of people also even thought of how this game is better than Assassin's Creed but in reality this game has also been very much heavily inspired by games like Witcher 3 and then came Cyberpunk. <laughs> And now we're gonna go to the number one and I know this number one game will not be the best choice for you but it is the best choice for me. Number one for me in this very year is Last of Us Part 2 without a doubt. It is that game. Yes, I love it. You don't love it. I'm sorry but I do. I understand the hate to some extent and after that I just don't. It's just ridiculous type of conclusions that a lot of people have been drawing out and I don't want to talk about that anymore. This game is a sequel to Last of Us, the very first game, which also won, by the way, the game of the year at that time. But it has a big impact on the relationship on Joel and Ellie uh, ever since that game. And now Last of Us Part 2 continues that story between Joel and Ellie. And not only that, adds more characters that you need to take care about. The story in this game is so much more dynamic, so much closer to real life that it takes you on a ride of an emotional journey of all of these characters that no other game has in my opinion. Again, in my opinion, it's one of those games that I believe you won't be able to see ever in the future as well. Naughty Dog did a phenomenal job not only in the story but also making the game look fresh. Fresh combat, fresh techniques, gameplay and the world around is so much more dynamic that you actually feel that you are playing Ellie in that world. The game definitely has some bold choices and some of them you don't even see coming, it just happens. Depicting how this world is not at all kind and anything can happen no matter what it is. That is what I'm saying how this game is very close to real life because when these things happen in real life, it will happen from out of nowhere. It will be a surprise for you. After finishing this game, I felt bad for all the characters, every single one of them. I sat for literally a week and I felt bad for every single one of them. I, I always recycled that story and I felt like wow, what a magnificent game this is that has impact on every single character, whether good or bad and I believe there's more bad than good. The game is beautiful, the world is beautiful, the characters are amazing, voice acted it very well, the story overall is great. I love how each of the enemies that you're killing also have some kind of character in it. The gameplay mechanics are so much more better. Everything feels 
bigger and better than Last of Us and that is why I feel like this game should be deserving my number one spot of the best games of 2020. So these are my best games of 2020. I know there's so many more games that deserve a spot and I believe so they do because there's so many games. Games like Phasmophobia that blew me away. Games like Fall Guys was amazing. Among Us that came out uh, two years ago but still is pretty cool. So many more games that came out and it's amazing. Assassin's Creed Valhalla which I didn't play so I cannot say anything about that. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I was able to play the campaign of the game and the campaign is amazing. I never played the multiplayer because I didn't own the game so I just played it from my friends and I only played campaign. It's so beautiful, so wonderful and I love that game. There's so many games to play and there's so many games to experience and that's the best thing about that. What are your best games of 2020? Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any and if you don't it's perfectly fine and well i would say thank you so much guys for watching this video if you like this video smash that like button and if you didn't like anything there's a dislike button you can press that as well i don't care i don't mind but with that make sure to also subscribe because that helps me out a lot and there's more videos awesome videos coming very soon to this very channel that you don't want to miss that out well again thank you so much guys for watching and have a great christmas have a great weekend and just keep on playing games